Today, we are going to talk about the brand new DNG 8 mode of Kendall Cool Cam and how to use it to shoot low noise, high detail 260 images. DNG 8 basically use optical flow image stacking technology to create the same result of the HDR photography. Without running into the common problem HDR photography has, which is ghosting and unsharp images. By combining eight raw DNG files, the photos produced by the cool cam will be much, much better than the raw photos produced by Insta261 right here, Misphere, or even the GoPro Fusion. Please check out this comparison video in 360, in a VR headset, and see it yourself. This is my workflow tutorial to show you step by step how to shoot, process, and color grade DNG8 to produce some impressive digital photos. Hey, what's up everybody? The boy Hugh here from Creator Up. If you want to learn more about the theory and the workflow, the detailed workflow of DNG8 and Kendall Raw Plus, a very special technology developer by Kendall, the company, go check out this video right here. As the technology is not just limited to cool cam. So go ahead and download the Kendall Raw Plus and also update the latest firmware into your Kendall cool cam. Get your Adobe Photoshop ready and we will dive right in. Step one is go ahead and connect your cool cam with your phone. For here, I'm using an iPhone, but this is also gonna work on Android. Open the cool cam app and it will connect to the camera. So first, make sure your firmware is at least in 55 and then go ahead and pick the big camera icon right here. And now I'm already in DNGA, but if you are not, so before we show you DNGA, here is how you take raw photo. Go ahead and hit this little icon. And right here, make sure you pick JPEG plus DNG. That allow you to take DNG raw photo, but that's just single DNG raw. If you want to do DNG A, you need to go ahead and slide all the way to the end. Say DNG A, and then go ahead and select your setting. Go ahead and turn on 360 mode so you see better. See right here, that's me. And then here is just a tip. I actually never use auto to shop with DNG 8 mode. I will go ahead right here in auto. I put in manual mode. And then on the ISO, I tend to try to keep it a hundred. But again, as you see in my other video, the noise is actually not dramatic. Even you push all the way to ISO 1600s. But for this welded room, I will try to keep the ISO as low as possible. And then in here is when you adjust. So now the room is, is overlit. So here, you see the scenario? It has to expose the whole thing for the window right here, as you see. If you pan around, I'll try to expose for the window, which is before it's blow out. So I try to underexpose the entire scene. As you see, my face is actually in the dark right now, but it's okay. We can easily bring it back in post-production. So that is one tip I would tell you using DNGA mode is trying to expose for the highlight area to make sure you keep as much information in the shot. That should be good. I can still see the outside environment. And then let's go ahead and hit capture. So very, very quick. The camera take a image at a very sharp time. It'll take less than 10 seconds and it take a DNG picture. So during this time, you are feel free to move because it's so fast. It actually usually don't will not create motion blur like HDR. I think you need to worry about it, keep everything still. But that's it. That's how you capture with the new app with the DNG A mode. So now I'm going to bring this footage into my computer and it will process them with the brand new Kendall Raw Plus. 
So after you connect your cool cam into your computer, just go ahead and drop all a DNG file into a separate folders. If you are wondering what is your file structure would look like after you use DNG 8 mode, so here's the file structure. You can actually see that here, limit that, only show a image per row. So you can just go ahead and select the first row as the first image, and then you can go go ahead and directly drop this into your Kendall Raw Plus here. So yes, that was, here's the next step. So go ahead and download the Kendall Raw Plus if you haven't already. Open that and just go ahead and directly drag all A image. Make sure that from 01 to 08, all A of them into the Kendall Raw Plus. And next step, and just go ahead and find your output folders. And then you can go ahead and hit renders. So the render is very fast. So just go ahead and open folder right here. So the next step is to go ahead and open that in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom or any raw capable software you prefer. It does not necessary to be Photoshop or any Adobe product. You can use any software. For example, a lot of people actually like Affinity Photos. Uh, it's a cheap alternative of the Adobe Photoshop. But for this example, we are going to use Adobe. So go ahead and open that. Before Photoshop open, you would go ahead and open directly Adobe Camera Raw. Again, this is not a color grading tutorial. If you want Photoshop tutorial, there are a ton on internet. My general process is go ahead and hit auto and let Photoshop help me out a little bit. And then I usually drop the highlight all the way down. So now I'll make sure that all my highlight is protective. And then if I can, I will push the shadow all the way up. Usually you will not go that extreme, but for this example, I really want to show you the result of the countdown roll. So I go ahead and hit and push it all the way to 100%. And then I prefer to add clarity, and that's how you create the HDR look. As you see, if you push all the way, you see that now we have that crazy HDR look right here. Let me just show you again. And then I also add some vibrance without touching the saturation. If you need color correction of this image, you can push it right here. As you see, the image is actually very yellow before because it's in sunset. But if I push it down to the temperature, to the blue, it will cool the whole image down a little bit, which is look a little bit better. The next step I usually do is actually add some sharpness back to the image. This step is not necessary because the Kendall Raw Plus already have really good sharpening and denoise. But if you want to actually denoise, that is how you do it. That will help you reduce some more noise and that will bring back the sharpness as you see right here. And then one step I always do is actually check here, remove chromatic aberration. To remove some of the annoying purple fringes you see like on the edges of the lens. To make things even further, I would try to drop the purple saturation a little bit and the magenta saturation a little bit to just get rid of that annoying chromatic aberration. And that's pretty much it. So I'll go ahead and open the image inside Adobe Photoshop. And then in here, I can do further color correction. Again, this is all depend on personal preference. That is my workflow, but your workflow can be completely different. I will first step, turn this into a smart object so I can have a non-destructive workflow. And then I will use one of my plugins. I use, again, you probably don't have that, but you can use any plugin or continue just use the camera raw filter to do event color correction. For this one, it's just very simple and easy, so I'll just use it. For the perfectly clean complete, I you should actually use one of the preset called fixed tint to get rid of that nasty purple tint on the cloud area on, on the edges of the lens, causing by the chromatic aberration. I use it on the GoPro Fusion Raw as well because all fish eye lens create this nasty tint over your footage because of chromatic aberration. And it's kind of necessary to get rid of it. If you want to further denoise, they actually have pretty good denoising engine right here. So I will add some noise and add some sharpening to make the image even more sharp. And then you hit apply. So now that image look really good to me. So I will go ahead and save this as in JPEG. 
So in the future update, CoolCam Studio will be able to work with DNG or TIFF file or higher format file. But for why not in this version, they only take on JPEG. So I will just go ahead and pick JPEG. Since the image is in such a high quality, there's not much quality loss during the process. So this is a good news. Just while you rename it, make sure you get rid of the first part right here to only left the actual file name, start with the Q, which is represent CoolCam. And then go ahead and save it. If you don't do that, the image will not be recognized inside CoolCam Studio. And then go ahead and open CoolCam Studio. Go find this image we just output, that JPEG file. Click on the CoolCam editor. Go ahead and drop that image directly into the CoolCam panel, as you see right here. And other thing, in the current version of CoolCam Studio, it does not read the calibration data of your image, so the image will be all warp and funky in the future release. Hopefully, they will fix that, but you can also just easily adjust it and correct it yourself. Okay, you can turn on the 60 mode to check everything is perfectly aligned and look pretty good to me. And then in here, you can also turn on color correction to pay attention to the image. Let me just make it bigger so you can see it. We turn it on. It actually do the exact same thing you usually show in Mexico to try to balance the color temperature and the exposure between the two lenses. So I usually always turn this on. And then go ahead and hit to Q right here. And then just flip to render tab. And when here, I usually pick PNG to have the less amount of compression. Max out is 4K. And then you can pick your output folder and go ahead and pick render selected. The process is very fast. So it's done already. And that is your final 260 photos. So from here, you can directly upload your photo on Facebook or Veer, and it will work on Facebook and Veer or any other 260 platform. Thank you for watching this quick workflow tutorial on how to use the DNG AMO. If you want to continue to learn more about tips and tricks of how I use the CoolCam to create content, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Again, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give me a thumb up and I will see you next time.